Western North America has seen its share of mountain pine beetles over the years, more than its share during a current outbreak of unprecedented scale. Now, scientists believe a warming climate may help these forest pests reach virgin territory on the East Coast. Starting with Alberta, this turf is now open to beetles because winters rarely reach 40 below anymore. That's a temperature barrier that dependably contained the bugs west of the Canadian Rockies in past decades. There was a essentially a place on the map, you can almost draw a line, that shows where the winters tended to hit minus 40 for sometimes north of that line and south of that they don't. And so that was one constraining factor and that's being pushed further north and further east. And then also having relatively cold summers, there's a few, a couple pockets in BC where cool summers kind of limited the development of the beetle. And those, those pockets are changing in their shape because of, of climate change and becoming more suitable, climatically suitable for the, for the beetle. Uh, similarly east of the Rockies, I think climate suitability is changing there as well. Not that the woods north of Edmonton are now balmy by our standards. They're just slightly cozier for larvae growing under pine bark. We still do get little pockets of substantial cold that are extended that last long enough to you know, have some overwintering mortality on the beetles, but as a blanket, it doesn't happen anymore. There's a absolute change in like average temperature, but the uh, lengthening of growing season uh, uh, you know, of temperatures that on the average would be maybe only a degree or a degree and a half C can really make a, a difference in the life cycle of the mountain pine beetle. <clears throat> and uh, it's really a threshold event. Uh, our models would predict uh, that if you gradually warm temperatures, you might not see any impact at all on the beetle until all of a sudden conditions would become very favorable for the beetle. The beetle's pathway around the Great Plains and to the east coast is through Canada's boreal forest. That's a continuous band of trees, many of them pines, that had never hosted mountain pine beetle before. That changed in 2006 when strong summer winds sent billions of beetles airborne from British Columbia to central Alberta. Um, and the thought was the beetle wouldn't be able to breach the Rocky Mountains over top of them, but the uh, overflight we got in 2006 changed that. And at that point, the overflight brought the beetles right into basically the center of, uh, of Alberta. Since then, the Canadian Forest Service has found that beetles can take what nature is giving them. This last winter was really mild up here, uh, much milder than average. And they only had the one cold snap in January. It was a severe cold snap, so at some sites we saw devastating mortality. At one site we had pretty much 100% of everything above the snow line was killed. But at this site, it only got down to about minus 34 under the bark, which is still cold, minus 34 Celsius, that's cold. But to the beetle, that was totally fine. Alberta has responded with an aggressive beetle killing defense. Foresters scan the canopy from helicopters and note any red trees, the mark of death among evergreens. Then contracted crews cut and burn any infested trees around those sites over the winter. The goal is to protect not only timber, but the wildlife and clean water supplies that these forests deliver. In the southern Canadian Rockies, it appears to have bought the province time. Time enough for a couple of quick onset cold snaps to catch the beetles off guard and knock them out. We, we hope that the weather would prevent the beetles from building up and coming in, and that seems to be what happened. But at the same time, we prevent anything from festering here, like the infestations never got to any size in southern Alberta, because we quickly went out every year and located those trees and, uh, and uh, uh, control them by burning them and killing the beetles that were underneath the bark. But to the north, where the terrain is flatter, the forests more sprawling, officials say the beetles are hanging on. It gives them a chance to head east. So even if populations were to decrease in the near future, they would still probably persist here. So they might fall off our radar and that we don't see them mass attacking and killing trees, that they're in weakened um, um, trees that are kind of on their way out with really reduced defenses that are dying anyways that they maintain these low population levels in but as long as they can persist in those habitats there's always the potential for um, future outbreaks as, as like climate conditions and weather conditions um, become more suitable or you have favorable years of successive weather in the in the future. Midway through Alberta 
the boreal forest turns from lodgepole pines that evolved with the beetles to jack pines that didn't. Until last year, no one was sure whether the beetles could attack and thrive in jack pines. Then the University of Alberta tested attacked trees and proved that they could. And a lot of the foresters were pretty sure they were attacking pure jack pine too, but the rest of the country didn't know it. And as soon as that publication came out, there was a lot more attention on the mountain pine beetle and management of the mountain pine beetle and what are we going to do about it. Because before it was always seen as, well, it's BC's problem. And I mean, it's been there for, you know, probably thousands of years, so it always has been BC's problem until it, you know, moved into Alberta and then it became Alberta's problem too. Nobody's sure how long it will take, but as conditions continue to look up for the beetle, its odds of continuing to the East Coast improve. Yeah, you bet. If, if the beetle is able to keep moving eastward, um, you know, once it gets past Alberta, there is, a, there is a continuous tract of pine that runs through the boreal forest all the way to the, uh, the East Coast. So essentially some of the problems that were in BC and then some we're starting to experience in Alberta could potentially be um, seen further east of us. So it becomes a national problem instead of just a provincial one.